Live from the Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 8. Tonight, 8 o'clock, a major traffic nightmare on the 405 after a big rig collides with a car in the Sepulveda Pass. It was wrong to take my daughter. She was innocent. A grieving mother breaks down in tears as a South L.A. community issues a plea to catch the killer of a teenage girl. A serial burglar targets apartments in Koreatown more than a dozen in a span of just a year. Then in just a few hours, we can expect a cold, windy, and wet Tuesday. And it is certainly getting cloudy out there, mm -hmm. isn't it? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being with us. Hope you had a great weekend. I'm Susie Sa. And I'm Jeff Vaughn. Find that uh, umbrella and that blanket as well, right? We'll have weather coming up with Evelyn Taft in just a second. But let's begin tonight with uh, developing news. A fiery collision in the Sepulveda Pass has traffic there along the 405. Pretty slow moving tonight. These are live pictures from the Sky 9 over that scene right now. Yeah, three people were hurt when the big rig crashed into another car. It happened near Mulholland Drive. Kick on 9's Elsa Ramon is live near the crash site with this latest update. Elsa? Well, Jeff and Susie, we were down on the freeway right next to the accident, but we were told by CHP that the entire freeway should be open very, very soon. They're in the process of removing that big rig from the center divider. In the meantime, the southbound lanes of the 405 are open, and those folks are happy on that side, but the northbound lanes, well, take a look for yourself. It is still a traffic nightmare. This is the side Caltrans is still working on a little bit further north up the road to get that truck off the center divider, that big rig that was involved in an accident. But as you can see, it's still slow going for everyone tonight. Take a look at what it looked like just after the accident this afternoon. That big rig filled with concrete crashed with a car, a Honda Accord, and that driver was trapped underneath that big rig. Three people in total were hurt in this accident. Two of them were critical. One was in fair condition. The CHP told us a total of seven cars actually got into an accident, but really just the Honda and the big rig collided and burst into flames. Good Samaritans got out of their car and pulled that driver who was stuck underneath the big rig out from underneath and possibly that was the difference that may have saved that driver's life. In the meantime, we're back out here live. Again, very slow going still on the northbound lanes of the 405 freeway. The southbound lanes have reopened, but we're told within the hour, the CHP says, these northbound lanes should be open as well. But until then, slow going. We'll send it back to you, Jeff and Susie. All right, Elsa, thank you for that. And Stu Mandel live above the scene tonight. Yeah, let's get that vantage point from Stu. Is traffic moving a little bit better there, Stu? Well, it is moving a little bit better, Jeff, that's for sure. You know, uh, Elsa is more than correct. All the lanes have been reopened on the southbound, but there's still a little bit of looky-loo slowing down there and a little bit of dust coming up as those cars are making their way past that crash site, getting a little of that residual dust on the roadway. Now, what's going on with the crash itself on the northbound lanes? Well, the big rig tow having a little bit of trouble getting those two, uh, two parts of that truck separated, and that might be what some of this slowdown or waiting is right there. But everybody's got the in line here, and it's as soon as those two parts are pulled apart, they're going to get that car out of there as well, and hopefully they'll get those lanes open quickly. Right now, though, like we heard from Elsa, northbound lanes still very slow and go. Only three lanes open at that crash site. That backup, as I've been told, pretty much on the brakes from the 10 freeway. That's a quite a distance. You can see some of those lights right there as they're making the bend up the hillside. So it is a very slow drive on the northbound 405 this evening. Live in Sky 9, I'm Sue Mandel. Back to you all in the studio. Okay, we'll continue to follow that story here on KCAL 9 News at 8, 9, and 10 o'clock tonight at KCAL9.com. But turning now to the forecast, a live look downtown at L.A. with some heavy clouds hanging over the city. Yeah, take a look at this, too. It is time-lapse video from our Mount Wilson camera just northeast of Pasadena. It looks like winter out there. Meteorologist Evelyn Tapp joins us now with some cold, wet weather to talk about, and that's coming in when, Ev? Jeff, Susie, as you saw, we saw a little bit of it earlier, but it's really going to start to materialize as we head into tomorrow and even into your Wednesday as well. Right now on radar, we are looking at mostly dry conditions, but a lot of cloud cover moving in throughout the day and with us right now. You're going to see that cloud deck sitting to our south as well. And as we get a look at the big picture, you'll see a few showers situated to our north. So as we get a look at your watches, warnings, advisories, we've got wind advisories over the south coast in Santa Barbara, otherwise below advisory level winds. But even then, we're still looking at gusty conditions for Lancaster and for Apple Valley with temperatures this evening in the 50s and the 60s. So 
Here we have it, FutureCast. We're going to take you through the whole thing coming up in just a little bit, but we do want to give you a little sneak peek right here, and you will see 10 o'clock. That is 10 o'clock tonight. We could stand to see a few showers over the Inland Empire. Then as we head into midnight, maybe a few more showers through the grapevine. We're going to have the rest of your future cast. We're going to run you through it, show you exactly when and where we're expecting the rain, when it's going to hit in your neighborhood, potentially. That's all coming up in just a bit. Susie and Jeff, back to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Look forward to that. Well, now to this story tonight. The hunt for the killer of a teenage girl in South LA has been getting more frustrated for her loved ones and for law enforcement. Yeah, no new clues have surfaced. And KCAL 9's Dave Lopez has a community's emotional plea for help tonight. Behind me, right where those people are standing, is where a 15 year old girl was next to her mother. And now the question is simple Will $50,000 as a reward make someone talk and come forward? This is our damn community. She was our baby, 15 years old. This is her mama. Just stop letting these punks. Because that's what they are. They are punks. Run around and just be killers and killing our kids with no recourse. It's an angry community, a frustrated community, demanding to know how could a 15 year old girl, Hannah Bell, be gunned down right next to her mother while the two of them were waiting in line at this hamburger stand at 78th and Western? Seven o'clock, Friday night, and the man who did it is still on the loose. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. It'll be easier on you if you just give in and take your punishment like you deserve. I just don't feel like talking. The mother of Hannah Bell speaking directly to the unknown killer. Be a hero. Turn them in because this is not prison. This is not about snitching. This is about keeping your kids safe. A man wearing a hoodie. That's the only description. The only leads. Even though there are working security cameras all around this hamburger stand, there wasn't one camera that picked up an angle of his face. Detectives tell me I'm standing exactly where he was, right by this post and right behind this pillar. Right here, he pulls out his gun and he shoots the 15-year-old, his face obscured because he's behind that pillar. And now the question, will the $50,000 reward make someone talk? And we're expecting your butt to be arrested. I'm expecting this community. I'm giving you one week to let LAPD know who in the hell did it. There is no question. There is anger and frustration in this part of South Los Angeles. But detectives have made it very clear, unless someone in this community has the guts to come forward, this case could remain cold. From South L.A., Dave Lopez, Kick on Eye News. Dave, thank you so much. Well, burglars used a scantily dressed woman to distract and ambush an armed security guard at a $12 million mansion. Happened in the 1200 block of Tower Road in the exclusive Beverly Crest neighborhood. Investigators say a woman distracted the guard while four armed men then rushed in. Uh, we are told that they zip tied then the guard, then stole his two guns, a knife, and some cash. Police say the crooks took the guard's gate opener to get onto the property. They then went inside the mansion and stole valuables. It's crazy what happened. Unbelievable. It is concerning, but not so much only because it sounds like it's definitely something targeted. Yeah, the suspects, police tell us, got away in a black and maroon minivan with paper plates. The mansion is tied to an unnamed music mogul. The property is no stranger to trouble, it seems. A sexual assault was reported there in January after a party. There is no evidence those two incidents, however, are connected. A caravan of about 200 migrants from Central America arrived at the U.S.-Mexico border yesterday, and they're still tonight waiting to cross. U.S. officials say the processing facility does not have enough space to handle them. They camped out in Tijuana overnight, many with young children, in hopes of being first in line to apply for asylum. Some took part in a prayer, saying they have faith the doors will open up for them. There is a reason we have the Statue of Liberty. We are a country that goes to war to protect the human rights of others. We have to have borders. We don't have borders, we don't have a country. And I've been watching for weeks as the caravan came up. Well, many are applying for protection because of violence in their home countries. Asylum seekers are typically held for up to three days at the border. If they pass the initial asylum screening, they may be allowed into the U.S. with ankle monitors while their cases are pending. Vice President Mike Pence was at the border today where agents gave him an update on the president's border wall. Earlier tonight, though, he was in Beverly Hills for a roundtable discussion and a fundraiser. The vice president is in town to raise some money for the Republican Party. He also was in about 120 miles east of San Diego to check out the construction of a brand new fence there that's been in the works since 2009. 
This new section of wall is underway. It will be completed by this fall. The President and I are determined to work with the Congress to fully fund the wall, to build the entire wall. But we have to fix our immigration system. Well, today was day three of the vice president's trip to Southern California. Over the weekend, he toured JPL in Pasadena and attended a fundraiser in Malibu. Actress Ashley Judd is now suing disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein. She claims he harmed her career by spreading lies about her after she rejected his advances. Judd has an A-list witness on her side. Lord of the Rings director Peter, uh, Peter Jackson, last year he revealed he wanted to cast Judd in a prominent role, but Weinstein torpedoed it. A spokesperson for Weinstein had no comment on that lawsuit. Well, as if things couldn't get any worse for the Dodgers. Well, today came the news that they will be without one of their all-stars for the rest of mm. the season. Jill Arrington here now with all the details. Jill. Not the news we wanted to hear nope. coming off a World Series run that fell short. That's right, two-time all-star shortstop Corey Seager will undergo Tommy John surgery on his right elbow and will miss the rest of the season. Seager had been placed on the 10-day disabled list by the Dodgers and had issues with the same elbow last year. Well, Seager was hitting 267 with two home runs and 13 RBIs in the 26 games so far this season. Had a few bad throws over the weekend and um, went and got an MRI this morning and it was necessary to have surgery now. It obviously sucks. Um, support your team as much as possible. Um, you don't worry about them. We've had problems like this in the past. Um, next man up mentality and that's where we go. So Seeger's expected to have the surgery on Friday here in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, the Dodgers opened a crucial four-game series tonight against the division-leading Diamondbacks. LA seven games back in the West. All right, Jill, thank you. Well, Hollywood sets sail on a new version of a big screen classic. Overboard returns to the box office, but it's far from just a remake. Nine on Entertainment is at tonight's premiere. Evelyn. And we're getting a look outside right now at the Santa Monica Pier. You're going to see the Ferris wheel lit up in full effect. Temperatures cool and a chance of rain moving in. We'll break it all down when we come back. Also at 8, newly released Israeli intelligence on Tehran could influence President Trump's decision of whether to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. And a mother accused of killing three teenagers in a fiery drunk driving crash arrested again. This is KCAL 9 News at 8.